Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio. You can find us on the Nothing But Net channel every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Nearly 10,000 views of our Dolphins coverage from the second preseason game. Make sure you're subscribed for all our Dolphin coverage, heat coverage, and everything else that we do there on the channel. Also free, FiveReasonsSports.com. Brady Hawk's got a great new article up there right now. No paywall about sort of Jimmy Butler's role with a new cast of characters on the heat. He's been pumping out those regular articles. Also, we do cover the other teams in town. Also check out the great sponsors of the five reasons sports network. I think I'm going to take one of these and go to sleep after this podcast. If you hear my voice, I'm still fighting it a little bit, Um, but this is therapist preferred. This is a CBD company founded in 2019 by a physical therapist to maximize performance and recovery for active people, hundred percent THC free and third party lab verified all the products made in the U S with cutting edge, cutting edge technology from organically grown hemp. But again, you will not fail a drug test. No worries about that. The most popular products, the CBD sports cream, the strawberry lemonade gummies, which are my favorite and the green apple gummies. Use the code five reasons. That's the number five reasons for 25% off your order plus free shipping on all orders. Again, go to therapistpreferred.com. Use that code, five reasons. And now, tonight's somewhat scratchy episode. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. I'm COVID-free, but not flu-free, so I'll try to get through this. I've got my floor plan, Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. You can follow Alex Toledo at Tropical Blanket. The three of us are here tonight. For a topic that we're going to kind of set Greg up for, Um, sometimes we discuss topics beforehand and kind of give away the ghost a little bit and sort of say the direction we're going. Tonight, we didn't do that. Okay, so basically what we're talking about tonight is what kind of heat team from the past this heat team might resemble. In other words, when we look at the roster, the circumstances, everything going on with the team, what will this heat team end up being? And is there any historical example, particularly going back to Pat Riley's first year in the mid nineties to what we're going to see this year? So Greg, you have not given us um, your selections. I'm just going to set you up here. And also I'm assuming that your voice is better than mine. So give me the first heat team that this heat team could look like. Well, let's hope that my voice is better than yours. And uh, I feel like we should have given you the night off. Um, let's just get out in front of that. But uh, but we'll blitz through this. I thought this is a fun exercise thinking to uh, kind of looking back historically at other teams. And and initially where I wanted to go is not where I ended up because I initially my first thought was uh, the way that they rebuilt around Dwayne and Shaquille with that big trade that I know you historically didn't uh, love. And then obviously it, uh, it flew in your face when they won the championship. But the more I looked at it, that team doesn't have any parallels. I The, the first one uh, that I think is closest and where I want to start is the 15-16 team. I feel like it's like the perfect um, of all the teams as I look back through Uh, the way that it was built. um, I see a lot of resemblance when you see like Jimmy and Bam are kind of like the Bosch and Wade. You have Goran that um, you recently acquired similar to Kyle Lowry and the way that he was, what he was going to bring to the team. Uh, You know, you get a veteran, a a tough veteran like PJ Tucker playing the four, similar to the way Lou Aldang was here. Um, Who knows what what veteran is going to step up, right? And they had like that Joe Johnson thing that came through for them. So I I like all that. And then you have like the young guys. They had Jay Rich and Justice in those roles. Now you have Tyler, you have Struess, you have Gabe. Um, And then maybe maybe I'll make a comparison with Hassan Whiteside and Omer Yurt Seven. 
uh, in terms of the big that you want to get something out of. Um, but that was the team that really jumped out at me most uh, as, as one that I can really see a lot of parallels. Alex, I covered that team home and road. And I mean, that team had expectations as the season went on of potentially uh, getting to the finals, particularly after, I guess, Bosch went out, which was sort of the odd thing. They had, they had the expectations before the season. I believe they were actually 27 and 23 at the all-star break and then kind of took off with Luol Deng. There was the prospect of Bosch potentially coming back, uh, which never ended up happening. And then of course, Whiteside got hurt in that series against Toronto. You ended up having uh, Justice Winslow play the five. I mean, but do, do you see similarities there? Yeah, I can definitely see similarities. That was kind of the team that originally came up in my head when we uh, went over the topic in the chat. And uh, it feels like they're kind of similar level teams. But then when Leif brought up that 06 team, and especially, you know, after they made those uh, blockbuster trades over the summer, I'm starting to like that comparison a little bit more. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I think that just the fact that this team is a little bit older, it's kind of like a, a – like a ragtag group of, of, of older veterans here kind of coming together to win a title, whether it's Kyle, you know, Markeef, PJ Tucker, uh, Victor Oladipo as like this guy trying to, you know, reclaim his career. I don't know. I, I think that I like that comparison a little bit more, especially when you talk about the, the character of the team collectively. But uh, I do like the other comparison too. I wanted to go there. I really did. But like the, the thing that I couldn't get away from is that that team, that 06 team for all of its flaws and like the weird fit stuff, it was a veteran laden bench. And this is not that. So it's like the more I looked at it, there's so much more unproven versus what happened in 06. So that's where I, I started to pivot. Cause another one that, um, uh, and I know Ethan's going to jump in here, but I just want to go, I'm going to go far back, maybe too far back, but there was a build after uh, the, the heat was eliminated by New York where they, they felt they had to get tougher and they went and got Otis Thorpe, Clarence Weatherspoon and Bruce Bowen. And they got tougher. And that was also one that jumped out at me, but um, there was less wholesale changes. So that's why I felt like this one was more appropriate. Yeah, they did make changes during the late 90s years. Uh, people forget that because they just think, you know, it was always, you know, Zoe and Tim and MASH and PJ. But he did make changes. Riley did make changes around the edges. And some of them worked and some of them didn't. I mean, the Clarence Weatherspoon move actually worked. Just people just remember one shot. The Otis Thorpe move, like he was kind of cooked by the time he came to Miami. Um, and again, I think that's some of the concern when you look at players like Markeith Morris or PJ Tucker. It's like, what do they have left over the course of a long season? I don't know that that's the issue with Lowry. I do think where the 06 thing comes in a little bit or 05, 06, which was really the build that I didn't like. I, I didn't have a problem with the Shaq trade. I, I had a problem with the 05 moves that ended up leading to a championship. And I will always maintain I was right about that team. Just Dwayne made me look stupid for about four <laughs> weeks. Okay. Because uh, okay. Well, everything I thought, everything I thought was going to happen with that team happened the next year. And it happened before the playoffs, pretty much up until two, two against Chicago. And then Dwayne just went nuclear and the whole thing worked for a small period of time. But I don't think that if you ask Riley with true serum, he thought that was going to happen. Other things were supposed to work better, like maybe the team actually playing for Stan Van Gundy or any of the other things that were supposed to occur. Okay, but that being said, all right, the 05 team, you know, when they added Gary Payton, I think people will try to make the comparison of Gary Payton to Kyle Lowry, but Kyle Lowry is a much better player at this stage than Gary Payton was when Miami got him. Um, Gary was... I, you know, I mean, Gary was good for the minutes they played him. That was pretty much it. But actually, Gary struggled uh, some during that regular season. People, again, don't remember that because of the shot in the playoffs. And, and it was actually Jay Will who worked out better than Gary did. I was going to say, though, Kyle's better than Jay Will, too. He is. No, I, I, be I believe that also. Well, he, here's, here's the key difference between Kyle and Jay Will. Kyle doesn't have to change uh, anything that he's done over the course of his career to be effective for this team. He doesn't, in other words, uh, Jason Williams had to, they, they, they wanted Jason Williams to change his playing style to the point, And I've said this many times that Jay will changed it too much. 
And they wanted him to get more aggressive over the course of the year and really only saw it in that game against Detroit. For the most part, he didn't really show it. Kyle can be himself here. I I think one of the things about this build that is encouraging for all the questions I have about depth and all all that other stuff, the players they brought in are just going to be asked to do what they've always done. P.J. Tucker is being asked to guard up to make corner threes. That's in his wheelhouse. Markeith Morris come off the bench uh, provide some versatility, some shooting from the outside and that kind of thing. Th- that is all, um, th- again, that's all stuff that they've done before. There- there's nobody who's being brought in here to do something different. That team, the 05, 06 team, there were guys brought in to do something different. Antoine Walker playing so more true. three, right? Like uh, sort of outside of his comfort zone a little bit because he played mostly four up there. Then he was splitting a role with Posey. Jay Will, Gary Payton coming off the bench, okay? Th- these were different things for these guys. None of this stuff is going to be different. That is one of the encouraging things to me about this build. And I'll, I'll cede the floor because nobody wants to hear my voice tonight. But Greg, that's my thought. No, I, I agree. And it, it also, like, when you think about what they did around the team in 96, 97, everyone had a very... Um, precise role and they stumbled upon some guys that played above their contract. So hopefully like when Max Struess can do some Vashon Leonard stuff. So you can even make parallels as they went back and built that team and they um, recovered from the Juwan Howard stuff and ended up with a really tough minded group that, um, you know, was uh, they got to the Eastern conference finals. I, I don't know. A lot of people discount that because of the suspensions and stuff, but they still got there. So, th- so that team jumped out at me too, but um, you know, ultimately as I look back through heat history, it occurred to me how much it's not unprecedented for them to recognize that they need to get a lot tougher and then go and execute a series of moves to get there. And this is just another example of that with the, with the guys that they got. Alex, you love that 06 team. I know like that's, you know, I love both of these teams that we're talking about. I mean, we, we talked about more than two, but specifically 06 and 15, 16, two of my favorite heat teams ever for sure. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think when you look at the 15-16 team, it, it's funny. I actually covered the 15-16 team more than I did the championship team of 06 because at that time I was a columnist for the Sentinels, so I was actually doing a lot of Dolphins, which was quite unfortunate until I got moved back to playoff coverage uh, you know, later that year. Um, and also, Pat wasn't very happy with me during the 05-06 season from what I recall because I was one of those who bought into the whole – stand thing at the time, which I had later found out later. Anyway, wasn't exactly the way it was put to be at the time by some sources. But uh, so I wasn't around 06 as much until the playoffs. The 15-16 team, though, again, is one of the weirder teams in Heat history because the expectations were high in the way that they were high for the, I I would say, for the 2000-2001 team. Uh, which I also think this team bears some resemblance to, because if you remember the 2000, 2001 team, that was a shuffle. Okay. They kept core pieces. They kept Zoe the too. Yeah. They kept Tim, right? Like they kept Jimmy and they kept bam this time, but they changed the pieces around them. Right. Like uh, that was the summer where Pat tried to make a big splash. I mean, just like he was supposed to try to get Giannis this year, but that wasn't possible. That time flew up to Orlando to try to get Tracy McGrady and try to get Grand Hill. Neither of those things worked out in the case of Grand Hill. That turned out to be a good thing. They end up making the trade for Eddie Jones, maxing him out. We've had Brian Grant on the pod. He's talked about that. That's the first big heat story I ever broke was Brian Grant coming down here in a trade. And Brian basically just told totally his agent, unexpected too. we to- were so excited as fans. Well, because Brian and, and I don't know if you heard him on our pod, but Brian, you know, was willing to take the, the middle. Le- he'd been talked into taking the mid level and they ended up working out a deal. Chris Gatling, other pieces, and they got him a max contract to bring down, you know, Eddie and Brian and then Anthony Mason in that deal and put those pieces together in the same way they put the pieces together in 15, 16, but then Zoe got sick in training camp. And in the 15, 16 case, Bosch got sick. Okay. Had the blood clots, which short circuited them that year. The only difference between those two seasons is that in the 15, 16 year, they got to see what it looked like with Bosch at the beginning of the year. And it wasn't particularly good. Yeah. And then they got better without him. And in the case of the 2000, 2001 team, they actually they played. 
Well, they did at the very end, right? Because yeah. they got 13 games with Zoe in the regular season. And then they got it's, three in the it playoffs. It never was what they envisioned, you know. When, they never got to put the whole thing. training camp up there. at. Uh, but they were only the eight and eight with Zoe because yeah. they were eight and five and then oh and three. And then may he rest in peace. Anthony Mason kind of checked out on the team after Zoe came back. So so those two and, and you hope. OK, I don't want to throw some bad karma out here for That's Heat what I was fans. about to say. I almost hate this I, I, topic. You now. hope nothing <laughs> happens to any of the Heat's core guys this year so that they never get to see it, because I, I think that was the frustration. They never got to see Dragic, uh, you know, with with Bosch and sort of full flower. And then whatever we think of Hassan and how things turned out, the reality is if Hassan plays in that series against Toronto all the way through. And I will tell you, there were players on the Heat who thought he could have played. OK, if he plays during that, they probably win that series against Toronto because even when Valanchunas came back, Valanchunas was in and out, but I mean, they were playing Justice Winslow at the five uh, and that wasn't going to work. Alex. Um, so the one thing that kind of came across to my head while, you know, we're talking about this is that this team, and obviously we haven't seen them play together at all. I think it's going to be a lot cleaner of a fit than any of these teams that we're talking about right now as far as on the court. So even though kind of like the more that we've gone down this road of comparing them to the past uh, past teams, and I kind of feel like 06 is right now the one I'm leaning towards the most just because of the, you know, the, the veterans and the, the collective character of the guys. I still feel like this team that we're about to see this season is going to kind of run all these teams out of the ground when it comes to just fitting together and not having a lot of conflict basketball-wise. The one thing I want to talk about when we come back is the expectation level of different teams and where this one fits compared to those. Because I, I think when you look again at 25 years of heat history under Pat Riley, there are some teams that have had very high expectations. There are some teams that had moderate expectations. I want to kind of get into to where this one fits before we do though, I want to tell you about another great sponsor of the five reason sports network. They just renewed with us uh, because people are having success reaching out to them. That's CPT of South Florida. They've been providing small and medium businesses with the technology they need for decades. They specialize in cloud hosted phone systems and managed it reach out to TJ. Again, so many of our sponsors are local. They're Miami sports fans. TJ is too. He's been helping South Florida businesses save thousands per month. He can do the same for you with a cloud phone system. You can work from anywhere on any device for a free in-person consultation. Call TJ at 954-966-2766. That's 954-966-2766. Or go to cpt-florida.com. That's cpt-florida.com. Deal with an owner, not a sales rep. Give TJ a call. And also he'll give you this deal, 25% off cloud phone service, including free phones and the first two months of service free. Just mention five reasons. Again, it's 954 966 Two seven six six, or visit the website at cpt-florida.com. Um, also, just a, a note here: I'll be starting a show on Five Reasons YouTube every Tuesday and Wednesday at nine a.m. called Starting Nine. It's going to be a half-hour show on all South Florida sports. Hopefully, the throat lozenges will work between now and then. We will do some heat, but obviously, I'll save a lot of that for here. Um, let's get into expectations, okay? Greg, when I look back at like the top expectation teams in heat history, go back to the very beginning. I think the first year, uh, and I, again, this is the first year I covered the team. So I remember it well, but the first year uh, after the PJ Brown signing, which was supposed to be the jo Juwan Howard signing, but of course that didn't work out. So they brought in Dan Marley. They put that team together. They'd already acquired Zoe and Tim. They just re-signed Tim to the max. I think it was, we're talking about 96, I guess that would have been. Yeah. That to me was a high expectation team, right? Yeah, but it was it exceeded expectations one mm -hmm. just by winning sixty one games. I don't think anyone right. expected them that to was get the that good that fast. Team. Correct. Yeah. Um, and going into the season, because they had lost Juwan Howard, there was a sense of that the uh, it was kind of anticlimactic the way that they, the team came together. I know that as a fan, like it was, um, it was 
the semblance of a big three before the big three. Like, as I look back on it, when you think about Juwan, Alonzo and Tim, um, and it didn't happen and it felt like it, like the rug was pulled out from underneath the, the, like, literally I have folders where I wrote like Juwan Howard with his number, Miami heat, like as I was in class, you know, scribbling, and then he's not on the team all of a sudden. So like, to me, it doesn't measure up because I didn't expect that team to ever get to the Eastern conference finals. I, I was excited that they were actually winning. Um, so from my perspective, this team has more expectations than 96, 97 did. The 2000, 2001 team I mentioned, I think had began before Zoe got sick. Before Zoe got sick, Be- that was the biggest expectations we had ever had for sure. Right. No expectations in 2003, 2004, which is a playoff team, because again, that team was supposed to be one of the worst teams in the league. I remember columns being written about that. Of course, they started 0-7 under Stan. Um, and then they ended up rallying to 42 and 40 and with Dwayne as a rookie and a young team and uh, that a lot of people liked, and they got to the second round the following year was Shaq. Um, I feel like to that point was the highest expectation team in heat history, right? No doubt. No doubt that that took everything to another level. That was like, we are actually now a really legitimate like nationally recognized team in a different kind of way. Shaquille O'Neal brought a profile that had never been there. And then it just coincided with Dwayne ascending to a level that no player probably will ever get to ever again. So yes, then that, that was that. And it's just funny how, as you're about to continue through this timeline, how it accelerates even further. Yeah. It accelerates a lot because in 05, I think the expectation was that the heat would make the finals after the changes they made. I think everybody thought that, but me, um, and then, so, so obviously the 05, 06 team, I, I don't know that the expectations were that high for the next year. Cause there was a perception that it was a little fluky maybe. And some of the guys were getting older. So I'm not going to look at 06, 07, but of course, number one is 2010, 2011. Right. And then the three years that followed, um, is this a higher expectation team before the season? I'll throw this to Alex because this is a little more contemporary. Uh, then, then, no, then, then the well, because I'm going way back to the '90s here. Uh, then, then the 15-16 team. Do do you have higher expectations for this team than question. you did for when that one was put together? Oh man, <laughs> you left me speechless here. This one is tough because it's hard to compare because. I think ideally this team, like I said, it just makes a lot more sense when you think about it. It's way cleaner of a fit on both ends of the floor. The other team is more talented. 15, 16 was a more talented team. I think we all thought Wade and Bosch were still like, obviously we know it wasn't Dwayne at the top of his game. We all knew that he was still an all-star caliber player. We all thought Chris Bosch was still at the top of his game. Alex, I'm going to cut you off. Is, Is Jimmy, Jimmy Butler right now a higher level player than Dwayne Wade was then? Yes. Yep. I can okay. say that easily. Absolutely. I think the question would be him versus Bosch, to be no, honest. Okay. No, well, let, let me ask you this. Is Bam right now at the level that Bosch was then? No, not overall, but I'll just, there's a, there's a caveat that has to be placed on this era right here. And I just think that because Chris Bosch only played 44 games the season prior, uh, my personally, I did not have the same expectation level as I have for Bam out of the bio going into next season as I did for Chris Bosch because I didn't know what he was going to look like physically. You know what I mean? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's maybe more speaking to my naivete during that season because I was absolutely on the hope train that, like, you know, everybody was going to, everything was going to be fine with Chris Bosch and him coming back was, was already crazy in itself. And then it, it happening again obviously was horrible but the only reason i say that team was more talented is because it was like that whole starting five yeah right it's like you got goron Dwayne, luald nang you've got chris bosh and you got hassan who at that point was in the peak of his powers right like i think right. that people forget that that was literally the season where we were talking about him like as somebody who should be getting you know uh talked about in a deep point conversation like hassan was still athletic as hell at that time and was looking really good and and maybe the the fit stuff would have got in the way between, you know, him and Bosch. Cause we never, and obviously Luol Deng as a three, cause that stuff and that we never got to see it actually fix itself. Maybe it would have, if Bosch would have got in that second half of the season, who knows? But to me, that team should have had more expectations because of that talent. Although I will say this heat team right now is, is better suited for the playoffs. And I think like Jimmy is better than anybody from that 2016 team right now. See, I would agree with that. I, I, so I'll ask you this question. Goran Dragic then, 
Kyle Lowry now. Kyle. Kyle. Okay. I mean, so all right. So so again, especially a- because Goran like played a little that he was still in his head a little playing next to Dwayne. I felt yeah, no, like. well, he was playing on the side of Dwayne. Like that was the thing. Like I, Goran really didn't figure out how to play with Dwayne for most. That was of also the year. the year after he was all NBA third team. So it's maybe I shouldn't say Kyle so easily, but it's just more from a, I, I guess a you know a preference thing with a two way guy. Well, 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 let's look at the other two. Kyle gets to be Kyle. Right. Well, let's look at the other two pieces in the starting lineup then. Okay. So Duncan, uh, what are we doing here? Duncan versus Deng, I guess. See, and this is where this gets weird. Cause I feel like this team would have taken off with Bosch at the five and Deng at the four and yes. Hassan would have been off the bench. Sorry. And that's why in the opening of this, when I compared him to Omar, you at seven. I know that people are going to say, gosh, I'm a hater, but that's where I went because I felt like ultimately they were going to be best with Bosch Deng. Joe Johnson, Dwayne, and Goran Dragic. Right. And nope. remember that the other thing, we'll get to this in a second. Th- that team extensively played two rookies off the bench, um, particularly yeah. in the second half of the season. And there's parallels and, there too. Right. Exactly. After they sent Josh Richardson to, to G League and brought him back up, and he went, he was on fire from three for about two months. Um, but also that team gave Gerald Green heavy minutes. Like, I, so, I mean, there were some holes on that bench. But the other piece here, I guess, PJ or, or Hassan, some of this, again, comes down to style of play, right? Like, it's kind of what you're talking about, Greg, where uh, on its surface, Hassan was a more impactful player than PJ will probably be this year. But in terms of fit, in terms of modern style of basketball, playing Bam with PJ Tucker makes more sense than playing Hassan with Bosch. That's the one thing about that team. The reason they struggled through the first 50 games was Hassan and Chris couldn't play together. Like, the, their numbers, if you looked at all their analytics – they with were flat line with the two of them together. They couldn't play together, yeah. you know, a really and, big front court. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, they, it just, it didn't, it, uh, it, it seemed like it would work because you're like, Hassan wants to plant his butt in the paint and Chris can float, but Hassan was such an inefficient post player and the, you know, and seriously, and the, I mean, for all the other things he did well, and so it just it just never worked because he wanted the ball down there, but he wasn't getting it. And so that was an issue. But let's I mean, let's look Crazy. at the bench. It was all weird. It, it was it, it was not a Spolstra team. It was a team. It's, it's kind of like you team. said, Alex, they had a lot of talent. So they had to try to make the talent work in that sense. It does remind me that team of the 2000 2001 team which I don't think was ever going to fit if Zoe was actually healthy. I think it would have had the same problem because yeah. you had Zoe, Brian Grant, and, and Anthony Mason. Mason. It was kind of like Shaq, on the front UD, court. and Antoine. You know, it was it, the same it, issue. Exactly. And and I don't and and I don't know that Riley would have made the switch to play Bruce Bowen at the three instead of Mace. I think Pat was still so stuck in the big ball, you know, New York ways that he would have tried to force a front court yeah. of Zoe. Brian Ryan Grant and Anthony Mason. And he did a little bit in the postseason and they got run the hell off the floor by Charlotte. So I, that's, I don't know if it ultimately to work and it does raise this question. Sometimes you're better off with less talent that fits better. So I, I guess we'll close here on this one from an expectation level. This is not big three expectations. Okay. But I do think it has higher expectations than the finals team from two years ago, because I feel like we were the only ones who liked that team before the season. And one of the reason we liked it, or I liked it anyway, was because it was uncluttered and I didn't feel it was overly talented. And I thought that Spolster could make the pieces fit better than previous teams that he'd had. I do feel this is the highest expectation team since 15, 16. Um, and, And I would say one of the top, five or six high expectation. If I, if you're going to put the big three as a, as one grouping, then it's in the top five. But if you're going to count those as four separate seasons, then it's probably not. No, like I'll, I'll take it a step further. It's for me personally, and maybe like, I'm just, I'm digesting this differently. I have the highest expectations going into this season since the big three era. Like this is that season, no doubt about it because you had your two pieces and you've kind of built this team tailor made around them now. Um, this was, uh, you know, Kyle Lowry was just such a huge addition. So I, I feel like, yes, now the expectations level are um, as high as 
any of those contending teams when they went into seasons uh, during the Alonzo era. Uh, even the Dwayne era is weird because some of those teams, you knew that they weren't finals contenders. You knew Dwayne was capable of anything, but they, they just weren't that good. These t- This team has heightened expectations to all of those kind of um, – those uh, – transition teams if you will the quentin richardson years and things like that how many teams in heat history have really underperformed expectations significantly i mean 07 08 is obvious right okay oh my god don't even bring that up that's yeah well and some of the knicks heat seasons the heat they performed to expectations throughout the regular season, no problem. And they just had, they drawn any other team. I think they would have advanced much further. It was just, there was a mental thing there that they couldn't pass. So they all by virtue of being eliminated over and over again with home court at higher seeds, were all, they never lived up to expectations, but the records indicated differently. Um, I feel like, the the first year of the Shaq team, they kind of met expectations. It, it was heartbreaking when they lost that game seven at home, but but I mean, just to get there, you knew you were you were within striking distance of the Spolster teams. Alex, going going back to 08, which, which teams have underperformed expectations? Well, definitely not any of the first two with Spol. <laughs> right. I was actually talking about that team today with somebody. You know, Jermaine O'Neal, Michael Beasley. Like, obviously, you did. Like, those are Wade's best guys there. The fact that Spo got those teams to, like, 45 and 47 wins or whatever it was is insane. But as far as underperforming in the Spo era, obviously, other than this past season, yeah. they're severely <laughs> underperformed. Yeah. We know the context behind it. But I, trying to think of other ones, it's really tough. Like, I think the only one I could really come up with are the two – are, are the, the Wade Bosch teams after the finals because although the expectations weren't crazy high, I think – it was like, okay, you lost LeBron, but you still had Wade and Bosch. You can make some noise that first year. Obviously, uh, you know, they lost out on Bosch, but just the rest of the team outside of Wade and Bosch was absolute garbage relatively, right? So maybe it wasn't fair to have those expectations. I do think this team, this is go- going to be, and this is why I agree with Leif as far as the expectations should go, even though 16, the 15, 16 team was more talented. This should be, and this is why I have high, high expectations for this team, they should be the best team that this that the Heat have had since the Big Three era. Well, the thing about that 14-15 team, I think you got to look at two sets of expectations. I, I think the expectation after losing LeBron, but still having Wade and Bosch was fairly high. And then yeah. when you saw the players that actually ended up playing that season, like Henry Walker getting crunch time minutes with Michael Beasley, um, you know, and I, Justin, how I, I, I looked at the stats on this uh, after the 14, 15 season. And I will say that the head coach knew these stats um, <laughs> that like nobody who played for that team, with the exception of Wade and Bosch, like lasted in the league more than two years. They were, they were all, everybody else on that team ended up overseas or out of basketball completely. Yeah. I mean, just look at the 14, 15 roster again. Okay. Oh, I, ha- I have it right here. I have it uh, two seasons in a row. After the last LeBron season and then that season. Shannon yep. Brown, Andre Dawkins, Zoran Dragic, James Ennis is still around. Justin Hamilton, we thought he might be a stretch <laughs> big, right? Um, Henry Walker's out. Sean Williams, that was another player. The, go- thought- the ghost of Danny Granger, yeah. right? Oh, um, gosh, what, a, what and, an era. And, of course, Josh McRoberts. And, and all they kept saying that whole year, which will tell you that the expectations shouldn't have been that high, was that they never got to see their, their full starting lineup together. And uh, with, with much respect to our guy, Norris Cole is going to uh, be on here. It was basically that starting lineup was, was supposed to be Dwayne, Chris, Luol Dang, Norris, and Josh McRoberts. They, they were literally pinning their season on the fact that they never got to see a full lineup with Josh McRoberts in their healthy, which tells you everything. Was it Mario starting? Uh, no, Norris started that year. Actually, uh, well, Norris was supposed to start. I don't think it ever I'll have, you know, we can actually ask him what happened there because I'm, I'm looking at it now. It was well, Norris. That's when start- they traded for Goran that that uh, they traded that was- for Goran. Right. Mario Mario played 80 games, started 37. Norris started the season as a starter, started 23. And then Goran started the last 26. It was kind of a three. I remember hit. actually now that we're talking about it in 14, 15, Chalmers, like those first couple of months had a really strong beginning yeah, of the did. season. I- yeah. Just no, look, he didn't want that. to be in the six man role, but he actually performed pretty well in it. But also, you know, who else got 10 starts that year, Shabazz Napier. So again, I think expectations might've been a little bit out of whack. 
All right, my voice is out of whack. Hopefully to be back uh, for the next episode. I, I, I tried to get it out, guys. CPT-Florida.com. Make sure you check that out for all your IT. And of course, TherapistPreferred.com. Use that code, five reasons, get your 20% off. I'm going to take one right now and pass the bleep out. Thanks to Greg. Thanks to Alex. We'll be back later in the week. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.